Welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about pyrometric cones and show you how I make cone packs, which might be a little bit different than what you've seen before or what you're used to. This is a temperature chart for large pyrometric cones. And using cone 06 as an example, you can see that at a firing rate of 27 degrees per hour, that cone will bend at 1798 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're firing at 108 degrees per hour, it will bend at 1828 degrees. And if you're firing at 270 degrees per hour, it will bend at 1855 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a pretty wide range for each cone. So I'll usually pick that center temperature at 108 degrees Fahrenheit per hour as my target temperature, because my kiln seems to like to fire at about 100 degrees per hour when it's near the end of the firing. The cone pack that I'm going to make today is going to have cones 06, 04, and 03 in it, and I'll use a target temperature of 1945 degrees for the firing. Cone 06 will go down first, and then I'll watch cone 04 as it bends and decide how far down I want it to go. I may want to soak the kiln a little bit or reprogram it to down fire and I'll also watch cone 03 and see if it bends just a little bit. I'll know I've got a good hard 04 firing. Protect your eyes when you're looking at the cones in the kiln by using some welding glasses or holding a lens from some welding goggles in front of your eyes. I found that it's easier to see the cones when they're in front of a kiln element behind them. So I use a piece of broken kiln shelf or some kiln furniture to block up the cone pack when I put it in the kiln and get it in the right position where I can see it easily during the firing. Roll out a small amount of clay into a cylinder shape about three quarters of an inch in diameter. and then cut off three or four inches of it. Push it down and flatten out the bottom and then pinch the top into a triangular cross section. And then take your thumb and push down on one end of it and create a little depression there with some raised edges that looks sort of like a flat spoon. And then take your first cone and check the angle that it needs to be set at by placing it on its end on the table. And push it into the cone pack about an eighth of an inch. And pinch the clay up around it. Check the angle with another cone. And then put the second cone in at the same angle and the same height. And you can use a tool to kind of tighten up the clay around the cones a little bit. And then put your last cone in. Check the angle. And check the height one more time of all the cones. Make them about the same. Tighten everything up. And there it is. The last thing that you need to do is poke a bunch of holes in the cone pack with a needle tool. This increases the surface area of the clay and lets it dry out much faster. So that if you're making these cone packs the same day that you're loading a large kiln, or maybe the day before for a smaller kiln, they'll be dry enough to put in the kiln without any problems. If the weather's good, you can put them out in the sun while you're loading the kiln, and they'll be ready by the time you get to the point where you need to put them in. You can also make some single cone packs that you can put in different parts of your kiln to see if you're firing evenly. Make sure you use a clay that's compatible with whatever firing temperature you're going to. And use the middle cone for the single cone packs 
so that they're not going to melt and you won't need that reservoir in the front of the cone pack. It's a good idea to keep a kiln log and write down the time and the temperature on your controller and on a pyrometer if you're using one and note what's going on with the cones in the kiln. Then you can go back later and look at these notes and make some adjustments in a future firing. Remember that the cones don't necessarily indicate the temperature that the kiln has reached. They indicate the amount of heat work that's been absorbed by the cones and the pieces that are in the kiln. If you have an alarm on your controller, set it for 40 or 50 degrees before the first cone should be going down and then watch as the cones go down every 10 or 15 minutes peek in there and see if you can see the cones start to bend and then go down thanks for watching if you find this kind of content useful please subscribe and comment and ask any questions below